Boyd fell behind early in the first quarter to Coppell. Started to get momentum back in the second quarter. Closed the gap really tight to within three. But Coppell is just a little bit too much on the night. 49-24 to 24 the final score. I'm joined by Boyd's head coach, Don Drake. And coach, it was a good effort once again from your team. You played Coppell, one of the top teams in the area. Gave them all they could handle early, but just a little bit too good in that second half. Yeah, they were. You know, there were some, some unfortunate uh, plays on our part. You know, Coppell did a great job of executing. We gave up one long one pass uh, right before the half for them to score, you know, to make it 28 to 11 uh, right before the half. That really hurt. Uh, and then again in the third quarter after we drove down and, and scored a touchdown in the third, we gave up another big, big uh, pass play that really, really hurt us, uh, you know, on the, on the scoreboard. So, I was proud of the kids' effort. I thought we played hard. We still got to make progress in terms of the mental mistakes and the mental errors that we're making that are giving up some big plays uh, against our defense. You know, overall, we, uh, I thought we played very, very well for 95% of the snaps that we played on Friday night. But there were a handful, and when I say a handful, literally about five plays that, you know, if we make the tackle or we don't make a mental mistake, then you know, the offense is going to have to go execute another play versus send their extra point team out on the field. And so that's what we've got to do. We've got to get some more consistency uh, and make sure that, you know, every snap we're going out there and taking care of our responsibility. We're going to go ahead and now take a look at the highlights. And in the first quarter, you start off behind. They return the opening kickoff 98 yards for a touchdown. Then their first play on offense, they have an A3 yard touchdown run. So you fall behind 14 nothing early in this game. Curtis Ladd, though, your quarterback, he was playing well, throwing the ball well downfield. Curtis really had another great game. You know, I thought he played really well the first week against Horn. Uh, I think he followed that with a, a really good performance the other night. Did a good job of taking care of the football for us. Made some great plays with his feet, as you see there uh, on the highlights. Uh, we threw the ball uh, a significant number of times the other night, more than we, uh, than we probably ever have. Um, you know, the score in the second half somewhat dictated that, but I thought Curtis did a really good job of, of running our offense and, and executing. Just saw Andrew Smith kick a 40-yard field goal. He scored three straight field goals on drives, and it's always nice to have a field goal kicker in high school football. Not easy to find the guys that consistently make the field goals. Andrew Smith can. I agree. Andrew did a great job. It's a nice hit by Adam Brown there on the running back. Uh, Andrew did a great job of uh, kicking the ball through the uprights. Uh, you know, we had some opportunities to score uh, touchdowns right there, but, you know, weren't able to make the play, and, uh, and Andrew comes in and, and gets his points in the red zone, which is critical. You've got to be able to come away with, away with points uh, on those drives. What do you think was the difference when you got towards Coppells in the field in that red zone that you just weren't able to punch it through for a touchdown you had to settle for those field goals? Well, I mean, we had a couple of drop balls uh, for touchdowns, you know, in the end zone, which, you know, that, that can't happen. Um, you know, we had an overthrow one time um, on a scramble opportunity. Uh, so, it, you know, it's, it's those kind of situations where we're there to make the play. You know, we just, we just didn't make it. And, um, you know, again, Andrew kicking another, another field goal there in the second quarter. Uh, so, it, you know, it wasn't a matter of uh, anything Coppell did per se is so much, you know, our kids just got to go make the play right there. Defense and special teams was huge in this game. You force a safety. It was a bad snap from their snapper, but you, your special teams, as you saw right there, already on the punter by the time he picks up the ball. Yeah, that was huge. You know, uh, we had a lot of momentum uh, at that point uh, in the game. You know, the defense had settled down, was playing really, really well, as you're seeing right here. Some nice plays there defensively for us. Um, again, I mean, the big play opportunities is really what, what broke our back the other night. You know, whether it was the kickoff return, their first play from scrimmage, a couple of pass plays through the air, you know, those are things that, uh, that we've got to eliminate. You know, and Coppell executed those, and I'm not taking anything away from them. They're a good football team. Uh, they did what they needed to do to make those plays. We, unfortunately, didn't do what we needed to do to take them away, and, and that ended up being the difference. Now, other than that, First touchdown on offense that Coppell scored the 83 yard touchdown run. Your defense for nearly two quarters held them in check completely. They don't score again on offense until three minutes left to go in the second quarter. And then they get a touchdown right before halftime. And, and that one, as you mentioned earlier, was really a killer. It was. I mean, that hurt a lot, uh, you know, them being able to move in and, and uh, put points on the board right before halftime. 
that hurt, especially knowing that we had the ball to start the second half. So we felt like we were in a position there that if we can go get a drive in the second half, uh, you know, we can cut that cut that point total down to to get back within you know get back within one score. Uh, it's a nice run by Curtis there to, to to get the ball in the end zone there in the third quarter. Uh, so that was that was very very tough. And then again, I touched on the fact that in the third quarter. Uh, once we went, did go down and, and drive and score, they had another big pass, uh, passing play that for 60 yards, I believe, um, they really hurt and, and created that separation again. And the Curtis Ladd touchdown run we just saw cut the lead to 28 to 17. They scored a couple of touchdowns, stretched it out early in the fourth quarter. Curtis Ladd here in a few moments is going to score a two-yard touchdown run once more, cut the lead back to 18. And at this point in the game, you're really forced to go for it on fourth down a lot. You have to keep up with Coppell scoring, and you weren't able to recover the onside kicks. No, we did score. We did take the onside kick. Drew had a great kick. I mean, the, the ball was in a, in a great spot for us to be able to make a play. Unfortunately, we didn't do it. You know, there's Curtis uh, scoring another touchdown there in the fourth quarter to try and trim that lead again. Uh, but, yeah, it was a great kick. and. You know, we just, we've got to make a few more plays, you know, either on the offensive side or the defensive side to, to go win that game. Again, the kids' effort was great. You know, Coppell's a, a highly ranked football team. You know, I think, uh, you know, I've heard uh, number eight in the state. I've heard as high as number four in the state. I think it all depends on what poll you're looking at. You know, and we feel like our kids were, were in position to, uh, you know, to put some pressure on them in that ball game, you know, and, and to, really, to really keep it close. And unfortunately, again, it, it comes down to a handful of plays that, that we've got to go make. And those, in those highlights, you really ran the option play very well, whether you're pitching it to Dedrick Scrivens or Curtis Ladd was keeping himself. Very intelligent plays by your, by your offense there. Yeah, I mean, the option has been, uh, been great for us. You know, we, we've been running that for the last couple of years. You know, Curtis just gets better and better in his decision making with that. And then the way he's running the football right now has definitely made it even more explosive for us. So, you know, that's something we'll continue to do, obviously, uh, as we head into the remaining part of the season. You mentioned Dedrick Scrivens, him and Malik Bozeman. Get, you're starting to get them a lot of touches in these games, and they're really, you know, providing you with the yards to back it up. Dedrick had another solid game running the ball over six yards per carry. Yeah, he did. I mean, Dedrick carried the ball well again for us. You know, we had to get away from it a little more than we wanted to uh, there in the third quarter. Uh, we were doing a pretty good job of mixing the run and the pass uh, up until, I guess, about the mid-third quarter when we were, you know, found ourselves down by 18 again and felt like we really just started having to throw the football to try and get ourselves back into the game. But I was pleased with his, uh, his performance running the ball and, and catching the football. Malik did some good things uh, through the Air Force as well. Uh, as well as some other kids. You know, you saw some clips of Jacob Cantrell, our tight end, had two big catches for us the other night. You know, Curtis did a really good job of distributing the ball to, you know, probably six, six to seven different receivers on Friday night, which, which is a big plus for us moving forward because uh, when people watch us play now and prepare for us, they'll know that they've got to, they've got to make a plan to go cover all those guys because we've got ways to get the ball in all their hands. Curtis threw the ball 45 times in that game, which is a career high for, for him. Not in your game plan, you were behind, so that's why you had to throw so much. How do you cut back on those throw attempts to where you don't have to throw it as much and become more balanced? Well, I mean, I think, you know, in going into the game against Horn, I mean, we, we're going to try to run the football and, and establish a running game and, and throw when we want to throw. You know, the other night, uh, the score dictate, dictates that a lot. I mean, we've got to, to obviously be in a position to where running the football and eating clock and all those things isn't working against us. And the other night in the second half, that's exactly what would have happened if we'd have kept uh, feeding the Dedrick the ball on the ground. So, you know, how do we how do we do that? Well, I mean, it's if we're on schedule, you know, if we're playing well on both sides of the football and in special teams like we're supposed to be doing, then. Uh, you know, I think that run-pass ratio is going to be a lot more balanced. Uh, we get in situations like the other night, and it's going to get real unbalanced in a hurry, you know. Now, we get about a, you know, you get a two or three touchdown lead, it's probably going to get unbalanced in the run game a little more because we're going to start eating more of that clock. So, I mean, the game has a lot to do with it. Defensively up front, you were seller in that game, saw a lot of clips of some hard hits up, up front. In the secondary, that's really the part of your defense that has been exposed in these first two games. What are you working on in, in practice to help – help them sure that, that part of the defense up? Well, I think the big thing is just making sure they know what coverage that we're in, you know, and, and what their responsibility is within that coverage. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've, 
we've blown that a few times. And uh, the teams that we've been playing have been good enough that when we have blown that coverage, they've been able to connect there and, and score points off of it. So, you know, I think the biggest thing is it's not, a, it's not an effort deal. Um, it's a matter of, of the kid seeing the signal and understanding what is my job and making sure that he goes and executes his job for that particular play. Next week you play Garland, another team that is 0-2 and has played two tough teams. They played Horn last week just like you played in the first week of the season. And against Horn, it was a much different game for Garland against Horn than it was for you against Horn because Garland only mustered up 131 yards of offense, you know, weren't able to get anything going, only seven points. But they did only give up 253 yards of Horn uh, playing defensively. You gave up 555 yards of Horn. Your game was more of a shootout. Theirs is much more of a defensive contest. Uh, both times Horn won pretty convincingly. How against Garland is this game going to play out? Well, Garland's uh, traditionally very, very good on defense. I mean, they're very fast. They're very physical. Not surprised at all by, uh, by limiting uh, Horn's production offensively because, I mean, they're big and they can run. I mean, that's just the way they've been. In the last, uh, I guess this will be our fourth year in a row to line up against them. And every year you see the same thing when you turn the film on. I mean, they're very fast, they're very physical, uh, very, very talented on the defensive side of the ball. You know, offensively for Garland, they're playing with their backup quarterback. They lost their starter a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so that guy's learning how to fit in within their scheme. They're figuring out what they can do well with him, what they can't do well with him. Uh, he is a very talented runner himself at quarterback. He was able to uh, score some points and really hurt Plano East uh, in the opening week of the season. You know, didn't have as much success doing that the other night against Horn. Uh, Garland has got to go establish the running game. I mean, they know they have to do that. They're very inexperienced in the quarterback, uh, at quarterback. So their passing game is one of those things that they're having to bring along each week and find out what the kid can do well and what he can't do well and not ask too much of him in terms of the passing game. So, you know, we've got to go in there and be able to, to stop the running game and put Again, put them in a position where they're having to throw the ball to make plays because that's just not their forte right now. And so we've got to, we've got to be able to stop the run. And then when we can force those passing situations, obviously limit the big play potential that we've, that we've given up over the last couple of weeks. Well, sounds like the game plan solid. Coach, thanks again for, for joining us today on Sports Talk. And, and good luck Thursday night against Garland. Appreciate it. Thank you. It is a short week for the McKinney Boyd Broncos. They play Garland Thursday night at home at Ron Post Stadium. Big game for both teams. They're both 0-2 and, and both better teams than their records show. Somebody's going to get their first win of the season. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Sports Talk. We will leave you with this reminder. Next week, Boyd hosts Garland in a big Thursday night matchup. McKinney High takes over Ron Post Stadium on Friday to welcome Irving Nimitz, while North plays a difficult road test at Frisco Centennial. Be sure to join us next week for more football highlights and a new Dennis Baker State Farm Scholar Athlete of the Week. From all of us here at Sports Talk, I'm Tyler Sloan. Enjoy your week.